So as many of you know, I'm a big fan of the advantages we can gain from using uh, large language models like ChatGPT, Perplexity, Claude, Gemini, and so on. And in that context, we see now that OpenAI has released a new web browser with ChatGPT built into it. It's called Atlas. So in this video, I want to tell you all about Atlas, show you some of the things it can do, and then if you see here that I'm not actually that enthusiastic, you know, like I might be on other things, I'll tell you why I don't get it. I don't understand why they've done this. Sometimes they've done it, people do things just because they can, and they don't ask the question if they should. This is just like, hey, let's put it in a web browser and that'll be great, and really? But maybe I'm being too pessimistic. Let's take a dive in and I'll explain as I'm going along. Okay, so Atlas is currently available at the time of making this video just for the Mac. Uh, OpenAI says it will be available for other platforms soon. So I'm using this here on a Mac and it's a nice uh, application. It's fully integrated with the Mac environment. It can even access your previous passwords and usernames and things import them from other browsers I mean, it, it's nice in that it's a proper written program it's not a not a hack job in terms of the actual software and once you have it up and running when you start it up you're kind of presented with chat gpt and this is the big change on most web browsers for years and years now when we start them up we're presented with a search engine so now rather than offering you a search engine they offer you chat gpt and then if you type in a url then it will go to that website it won't say oh are you asking about that website it will just realize if you ask it a question it will go ahead and answer it in chat gpt and then more than that it's also got search results that you can click on by clicking through the different aspects images and search results videos and so on just by clicking on the uh, icons inside of the browser so basically the fundamental sell here is rather than open up your browser and go to search you open up your browser and you go to chat gpt now you can be sure that google are going to try and do something similar with chrome and kind of you know, make search and well, they're already doing it, but I wonder how far they're going to go. It's going to be quite interesting. Now, OpenAI don't own a search engine, so they're going with ChatGPT uh, instead. So, you know, that's OK. I can do that from my existing browser. If I want to go and have ChatGPT as my main source of information, I can just open up Chrome or Firefox or Edge and then I can just go to the ChatGPT website. So nothing much of a big advantage here for me personally. Of course, the advantage is for OpenAI, they want this. They want users using their service and they monetize that with the subscriptions and, and so on. Now, some things you can do with it, as well as, you know, just browsing the web, you can interact with any particular web page. So if you go to an article, you can say, you know, summarize this for me and it will create a summary of that web page for you. More than that, you can say, you know, uh, rewrite this as an essay for you know my high school class and it will go ahead and just rewrite that so the normal things that you could do with any kind of large language model summarizing rewriting you can do that now with inside the browser kind of in a sidebar that comes up and all these kind of things you can achieve kind of manually or semi-manually using extensions or cut and paste or you know it's this is not new things you can do this now maybe they're trying to bring in a level of integration here you can even ask other questions like, you know, uh, the web page here is one from an English news site, a British English news website. And you can ask it, you know, uh, is this, uh, you know, are there any spelling mistakes for US audiences? And you can go through it and you can say, yeah, look, the color is spelt different or behavior is spelt different or whatever. So, you know, you can interact fully with, with the web page. But more than that, there's now an agent mode. Now, the agent mode is basically giving an AI model control of a browser. In this case, not your browser, like your Chrome or Firefox that you're using, but you're using Atlas, so it's built into it. So you can go into agent mode, you can ask it to do things. So of course, one thing I wanted to see whether it, it could really help spammers, which is a bad thing. Let me point out it's a bad thing. Like create me a new email address at AOL, for example. And, you know, will it go ahead and open it and then fill in all the data and, you know, create you an email address and then just say, here you are, here's an email address for you. You know, that would be pretty, pretty bad. I know there are other ways of automating these things that spammers use, but 
it can do it. It kind of struggled along the way and I had to kind of keep reprompting it and kind of saying, yes, carry on. But I'm sure if I created a prompt that had enough details in it to start with, it could probably just go ahead and do it for me all in one go. So that's a bad thing uh, in that sense. From a good side, of course, you can just say, you know, write me an email that's asking for some holiday days, vacation days, and it will go ahead and open the window for new mail, fill in the subject, fill in all the body, and create the email for you. And again, you could do that already now, and then cut and paste, or if you're using some extensions or whatever, you could do all that. Even my little uh, Tray AI program, I did a video about several months ago, that will do this kind of thing, and that sits in the Windows Tray. So integration seems to be the, the thing here. Of course, it is nice that you can click on the new email button and create the, yeah, but I mean, you know, how much is it taking me more time to type in the prompt than it would be for me to move the mouse and click? <laughs> That's the bottom line here. I'm not saving time. It takes me more time uh, to do this. Now, of course, it can do other things like it could order takeaway food for you. Now, of course, you know, we might live in a kind of a utopian idea of you just say to your AI assistant that's listening in the whole house, order me a pizza. But remember to do that, it's going to need your personal details to log into whichever food service you're using and maybe a delivery service. It's going to need your credit card information and it's going to go ahead and use all of those automated. So if you just say, order me a pizza and then suddenly 20 minutes later there's a ding dong and the pizza's there. Well, you're, you gave a lot of information or control to the AI system and it tries to do that. You can all ask it to order food and it will go ahead and go to the website just like with a new email and, and try and click on the right things to order it. You know, Okay, I mean, do I really ever want to do that? Well, probably not. Uh, not really. Uh, so, agent mode is interesting. I mean, another example is you can go to a programming website, like, say, Python Playground, and it knows it's Python Playground. You can say, write some code in the browser here to do a certain thing, and it'll go ahead and write the code in there. And again, all of these things you could do by interacting with large language models already and then cut and pasting. This is kind of doing the cut and pasting bit for you automatically. So, so that's what it can do. So it's a, it's, a, it's a web browser. It's actually based on Chromium, so you can even use Chrome extensions. And you could set this up with all your passwords and your email saved password information, your extension. You could set this up as your main browser. The biggest difference is, is that rather than going to a search page to start with, you go to ChatGPT and then you can ask it to do things on agent mode, which at the moment seem to be more of a pain than they are uh, of a benefit. So this is really my point. I can do all this already and that's fine. And I like streamlining, That's I'm all for that. But at the moment it's not, it's more difficult because I'm constantly typing in long complicated prompts to try and get, no, not that, rewrite that, do this. You know, it's just like, well, I could do all that already. I've got ChatGPT comes up with just a hotkey on my PC and up it comes and I can start typing in whatever I want. Same for perplexity. So, you know, it really feels like it's to me, it's like, hey, wouldn't it be a good idea to integrate this into the browser? And they haven't asked if they should do. So it really is one of these things we can do it because we can, not because we can do it because it's actually useful. Now, I understand there's some economics going on here. At the moment, Chrome and Google search own you know, 90% of the web in terms of revenue through advertising that's dominated by their web browser, the full integration, you're into Gmail, you're into YouTube, you're into everything. And they want to wrestle some of that away. And I understand that completely. But this wouldn't make me change. This was this would not make me go, oh, I'm going to go, I'm going to change now. I'm going to move away from Google and I'm going to start you. It wouldn't. I mean, it would. It's like, oh, that's interesting. Oh, that's fun. Oh, look at that. But actually, it doesn't leave me like thinking that I need it. And that's the thing. A lot of things that we have technology wise are great when we say that's exactly what I need. And Gmail was exactly what I needed long, many years ago now when I first signed up because, well, I've done a whole video about this. I mean, I used to work at Alta Vista and the idea of having emails that were searchable, it was all great. And Gmail came along and did it. Okay. And uh, brilliant. And I've been using it ever since. And then that, you know, YouTube, we needed something, to, an online streaming platform and it did it. So, you know, but do I need AI built into my web browser? No, <laughs> I don't. So I don't feel the need for it. It's not like, oh, I really wish, I really wish. I don't feel the need for it. Now, that's not to say this isn't going to get better in the future. I eat some humble pie and go, ah, I did actually need that. And this is brilliant. Now, I admit that may happen, but it's not today for sure. Anyway, 
if you've got a Mac, go and give it a try. We'll see what happens when you know the Windows version comes out, Linux version maybe, we will see. You can give it a try then. Uh, but I'd love to hear your thoughts in the comments below. Do let me know. Okay, that's it. I'll see you in the next one. <laughs>